Obviously, we're going to be talking about uh, using EXTJS components in an Angular 2 app. Um, I did do a session on Monday during the training, like the, the afternoon session. Is there anybody that was there? Who was there? Okay, a couple of you. So that session, I talked more about kind of what it meant to be an Angular or an open source developer, or, you know, what, what you need to deal with in terms of uh, the node package manager and how you build an Angular application. And then I talked a little bit about the components, the EXTJS components. I'm going to do a little bit of review, but I'm mostly going to focus on the Angular 2 components. So a little bit of overlap, but kind of moving forward from that presentation. Um, again, my name is Mark Guzmano, uh, sales engineer. Uh, that's my email address. And um, one of the things that's unique about uh, where we are with this technology is it's in preview mode only. In other words, we're not releasing any software uh, yet. But we are very, very interested in feedback. If this is something that would help you still use great components within your Angular applications. And if you are at that point where it would really be helpful, jot my email address down because I can you know, make myself available to you. We could talk more about it and you know, see if we can make that work. So, so this is just the abstract. Uh, we'll kind of just move over to here. Uh, let me explain what the Angular 2 bridge for EXTJS is. And I guess one more question. Is anybody in here also, uh, uh, did you also sit into the previous session that Mark Brucato did on uh, React? OK. That product and this are very similar in their purpose. Um, obviously, uh, in both cases, we want to enable you guys to use or utilize the, some of the XJS environment within your open source applications, which at the moment, you know, Angular and React seem to be, you know, some of the more popular ones, but, you know, that may change over time. Um, I also, in this particular uh, demo and also in the React uh, demo, um, take advantage of layouts, non-visual classes. So there's, there's more than just the use of components, but components is probably the most interesting thing that we will uh, look at. Uh, I've already talked about it currently being in preview. Um, but as I said, we truly, truly need your feedback on this and would love to help you figure out a strategy to utilize it. Um, it's just not packaged in a way that, you know, it's just straightforward to, to use. So that's probably the biggest thing. For example, there's no overt Sentia command support for the toolkit. Um, it uses the modern toolkit and it does take advantage of theming because there's no Sentia command support. I'll kind of show you how it uses theming. It essentially, at the moment, what I did is I created an EXT application that is nothing but a list of requires and then built the theme based on that and then just used that theme as if it was a local CSS file. So that's not a perfect way to do it in our world, but that's why it's a preview. So we'll, we'll look at some of that. Um, so when you're using Angular 2, those of you who may be a little bit deeper into it, um, you're going to need to figure out how you're going to get started with a project. You're going to need to figure out how you're going to do the equivalent of what the Sentia command does to scaffold your application. Uh, there's several ways you can get started. Uh, one way is to go to the Angular 2 site and run their uh, getting started application. And again, this was something that I did on Monday. We actually did a deep dive and ran through the entire getting started um, for Angular 2, which gives you a starter project, of course. You can utilize the Angular CLI, which is close in, in uh, purpose to what Sentia Command does. It is a tool that's written, or that is being written by Google, that allows you to scaffold your application, build a production version of your application. And um, I'm going to use that for several of the demos that I have here. So it's pretty straightforward to use. And uh, 
lets us focus more on the application than on the, uh, the plumbing. There are also dozens of other ways to do this. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, GitHub repos with starters that uh, people have built and for whatever it's worth, I gave you the link to it. But in some form or fashion, you need to get started and build an Angular application that is gonna house the ext.js components. So I thought I'd start out quickly with us building a starter. So maybe we could use it to fill in as we get going. So to do that, I'm gonna go over to a terminal window and I'm going to go ahead and uh, let me go to a spot where I can do this. Sorry about that. Can't type. All right. So I just have this folder on my hard drive with several uh, items in it. So I'm going to create an Angular 2 application with the CLI. And it's, it's uh, pretty straightforward. NG which is the abbreviation for the Angular 2 CLI new. And I'll just call it my app. Now this is gonna take a little while to run. It's gonna go out to NPM and go grab files I need. It's gonna set up a structure that I can use for an Angular 2 application. So while that's going, I'll just let it sit there and we'll come back to it. So very, very quickly, I'm going to do a little uh, Angular 2 101. So Angular 2 is obviously the second version of Angular. Angular 1 really, and this is not me saying it, I think this is pretty well uh, understood in the industry. Angular 1 is quite a different product than Angular 2. Uh, Angular 2 introduces the concept of components. It introduces the latest in JavaScript syntax. You have several options. You can use regular ES5 syntax, but more and more uh, examples and Google itself is using TypeScript, which is Microsoft's implementation of the future of Java script. And uh, they provide their own transpiler to actually bring that particular environment into a runnable environment for most browsers today. So. Um, because of that, you have a different uh, syntax style. And I kind of just built a very simple example on the right-hand side here. Um, you can see down here that everything that is a component is a class. So class, simple component. So this component's named simple component. Export says, hey, this particular class might want to be imported by some other module. So modules are now a part of things. I'm importing the component layer of Angular, and then I have a decorator. Those of you who may have been at the keynote or at uh, Don Griffin's session may say, you know, that looks like a similar structure to what the next version of EXT is going to look like. And that's true. It's very similar. So uh, there's some synergies there. Um, you'll also notice that in this particular directive, we have a component specified. And in the component, there's some metadata about this particular class. The fact that its selector is simple says that if I'm going to put this somewhere in my HTML, I'm going to use angle bracket, the word simple, close bracket. So it's the tag that I would use. This template is the HTML that will be injected wherever I find that tag. And styles is just any CSS styles that would be applied to this particular component. Both template and styles could be put in separate files, but it's just easier to show it to you here. And then you'll notice some syntax that might be a little bit new to you in the template itself. There's these uh, double squiggly lines or squiggly brackets which stands for implicit data binding. So what this is saying is replace this section with the variable value of ti whatever title has in its value. So title is um, bound here and bound here. And in the class, here's where I'm setting it. I also have a button that I'm defining. The button has a disabled property. So the square brackets connote a property. 
and this property is going to be the value of is disabled, which starts out false. And then finally, the round brackets represent events. So for the click event, I want to run the onClick method and pass in this parameter, and here's the onClick method down here. All right. So I have, I think I have this example up and running over here. So here's this example in a page. So again, it's, if I bring up the code here, it's got a t an H1, which is that real small app works here. And then it has a button that currently also says app works because they're both using the title as its uh, bound property. The click event will call this onClick function, and the onClick function does two things. It will change the title property and set the isDisabled property to true. So when I click the button, both pieces of text change because they're both bound to the same uh, property, and then the button is disabled. So again, very simple example just to give you a sense of the coding model. All right, so it looks like our, uh, our um, generation of our app with Angular CLI is done. So what I can do now is change directories into that app, and I could go ahead and run an editor against that particular application. I use Visual Studio Code quite a bit. And that's what this is. So what do we have in here? Um, of note, we have a package.json file. This is what NPM needs to know what to download. We have some Angular-specific configurations for the Angular CLI. And under the source module, we have an app folder with an initial component that doesn't do that much. It just kind of shows a, 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 an app works. So, so this is the structure that we would use. For the Angular 2 CLI, if I run ng serve, it will run a web server against that particular folder, very much like Sencha App Watch does. And it will sit there and listen. It'll rebundle things with Webpack, and then also give us a server running against port 4200. So if I then go back over here to port 4200, I can see that simple app. So I've got a starter that just gets us going. I won't go into much more detail than that, but if you have questions, you can certainly ask me. All right, so with that, let's talk about the uh, Angular 2 bridge and uh, how we built it and what it contains, uh, things like that. Um, the first thing is that, uh, and a really interesting thing, we, when, when we build the documentation for the framework, we actually build the documentation from comments inside the framework code. So if you ever went to our documentation and spent any time looking at it, so let me go over there. If you go to docs.sentia.com, go to our documentation and, you know, pick something, a button. This button allows you to peer into the source code. So this is the source code of the button. I know it's small, but there's a lot of comments in here. And these comments are used to actually produce our documentation, what properties are, what methods are. As we produce that documentation, we also produce uh, JSON files for other tooling. So this was other tooling. So um, the way that the uh, bridge works is it figures out what code it's going to write by basically scanning this JSON file of documentation because we define the properties, we define the methods, we define the X types, all that kind of stuff is there. So what I'm showing you on this screen here is actually of that file, what things we currently aren't doing. So we scan through that whole file, and this thing is saying, but don't generate any Angular 2 bridge code for anything that says widget, 
or anything that has more than one dot in it or anything that has the word action sheet in it. But so basically what we did is we, we generated code for those primary components that make sense to be generated for. So here's actually the, uh, the folder where I'm keeping all of this stuff. And what I'm referring to right now is in this file here. It's all of this stuff down here. So basically, the entirety of this bridge product is generated. And what's the result of it? The result of it is a bunch of TypeScript files. And those TypeScript files represent a lot of the X types that you know and love. So here's one for the calendar. Here's one for you know, some D3 things, here's one for the list, and you're saying, well, that doesn't look like anything. Well, you can do inheritance in, in uh, TypeScript like you can in ext.js. So where most of the work is done is in this base class. And basically, there are templates in here that drive the creation of all these things so that we can generate all of the, um, I'm in the wrong one, I can show you this one here. We can generate all of the capabilities that the, 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 uh, the bridge is going to do. And you can see here, for example, for a button, here's all of the, these are basically the configs. These are all the configs that are documented that a button supports. Here's all the events that a button can support and all its properties or parameters. And these are just all the names of those events. So what I'm saying is that the entirety of a component is available to you in, these, in this Angular 2 bridge. All right? And I'll show you what I mean by that. So how would we use one of these components? Well, here's another simple example, but this is using the grid the ext grid, right? So we chose to use an x as the prefix identifier for the bridge products. So if you've gone to the React uh, session, you know it was x dash something, right? So it's x dash whatever the x type is, is called. So for a grid, it's grid. So x dash grid, and you close it with a closing grid uh, tag. Inside of that grid, or any one of these components, we will have properties and events. And ultimately, you'll be able to call methods. And I'll talk about that in a minute, right? There's two ways we made properties available to you. One way was just one giant config property. So we said, hey, Every X type has a config property. That config property can have basically everything you're used to defining for that particular X type. So here's the grid, and its config is associated with the grid config variable in the class, which is right here. And this should look very familiar to anybody who's built a grid, right? There's a title. There's a columns array, then there's a store. In this case, it's an inline store, all right? So if we took a look at this, let me make sure I've got the right one running here. Here is that example running in an Angular 2 application. It's the grid, right, with a title on it. And the Simpsons data that we're all so fond of in the example, right? So that's one way you could do it. If I show you the code for that, it'll look pretty much like what I just showed you. Uh, it is right here. And it is basically like the component that I showed you that was the base component. It imports something. It has an optional selector if I wanted to use this somewhere. It can uh, bring in styles. Here's the template for the grid using the x type, uh, x dash x type. And then here's the config 
value laid out in the class. Okay? Now, one of the things you might be saying is, Mark, well, how did it know to use the grid? Where's the import statement for the grid? Right? Because I don't have one up here. Well, Angular 2 has this concept of modules. So if I come down here in the app itself, one of the things that I've brought into this application is a module called xmodule. So I imported xmodule from Angular 2-extjs. What is Angular 2 EXTJS? Imagine that being an NPM package that I brought in from NPM. So if it was an NPM package that came in, it would be under node modules. Here's Angular 2 EXTJS, and it's bringing in X module, and X module is exported, and if I go further, X module, let me find it here in the M's, is every other component. So this X module, X dot module dot JS is the transpiled version of what was written to export all of the other classes that I showed you before. So that's the kind of connection. So I have all of the uh, X types that are implemented available to me in my code. Okay? So I've shown you one so far. I've shown you this very simple example of the grid with only one config. Let's take a look at that example if I were to use it with more than one config. So let me close this so I don't get confused. Let me close all these. And let me open up this. Well, first off, that's where we started, one config, just this one. Let's look at this example here, which is basically the same code. It's just structured maybe in a more uh, angular to familiar way. So here we still have a grid, but this time we have individual properties that we're setting instead of one giant config. So we have a property for the title, for columns, for store, and then we have a select event, an activate event, and an event that doesn't exist in the documentation called ready, which I'll explain in a moment, okay? So title, it looks like I've hard-coded it in this, uh, right in the uh, template. And it's kind of a, kind of interesting syntax. The double quotes is where I put the variable, but I wanna put a literal in there. So inside the double quotes, I've gotta put a single quote to put a literal in there. So it's double quote, single quote, and then the text. Grid columns doesn't have single quotes in it, so this says the columns config, or the columns property, is being filled in by the variable called grid columns, which is right here. Same is true for the store, right here. And then the three events I have defined, select, activate, and ready, are all defined down here. So that's the entirety of it. So about the only thing I have here is I have, I have some events being handled by council logs. I'm just logging to the council. So if I bring up this page with the debugger in it and click on one of the rows, maybe, I, oh, I'm in the wrong one. In, in the bridge home two, this is the second one I'm showing you. I guess I have an event in that one. So I am able to react to the events that are from that particular grid, okay? So that explains why we have those two events that are familiar to us in here, select and activate, but what is ready? Well, ready, if you think about it, or maybe I haven't really explained completely uh, how this is architected, we have this Angular 2 component written that represents a grid. Underneath the covers, we are ext.creating a grid. And the result of an ext.create is an object. It's an ext object, right? So if I wanted to call a method on that grid, 
I need the ext object, right? So this mechanism lets you know when the grid is ready. And when the grid is ready, which is line 34 here, that method will send you the angular component that was created. Inside the angular component is a property that is the ext object that again, we're calling x, but we could call it anything. So this right here, in this particular case, the grid.x is the ext object. So if I wanted to call a method show, in this particular case, I'd say the grid dot x dot show. Okay? So the purpose of this ready event is for you to capture this parameter and make it a property of your class so you could start calling events anywhere or methods anywhere you wanted. So pretty simple. Certainly ask questions if you have them. So all of the components that are available start with the prefix x dash. That could change. That's how it is right now. Following it is the x type. So you can use the current documentation to know, you know, how do you call the calendar? How do you call a chart? Well, the chart is a, a Cartesian x type, so it's x dash Cartesian. Um, and then there's that general property called config, and every component has that property. They also all have a fit to parent property. The reason for that is you may want to put one of these components in, I don't know, a, um, a bootstrap.js page, and you want it to fit to the div that you're putting it into. So we just have a little extra thing to say, fit to my parent, so that everything kind of sizes correctly. And then they also all have this ready event. So it's a pretty consist consistent um, way to go after this stuff. All right. Um, so this was just the second example that I showed you. You could also take advantage of the ext.js layout system if you wanted. So in this particular case, imagine having a container. Well, let me actually show you an example first. Let's see here. So if I go over here and I show you this page. All right, so th what is this? This is three ext components, one component, which is the, uh, the drop down here, the pivot grid, and a chart. These are in a VBox layout, because they're going vertically down the page, right? Got some spacing between them, and I use the shadow property, just to make it look cool, OK? So that's what uh, we'll look at the code for. So if we look at that code, um, forget which one it is. Hang on one second here. It is the extangular file. So that code is this right here. So let's focus on the template first from here to here. So you'll notice that we start with a container at the root it is fit to parent equals true. So in other words, I want this one to fit whatever is on the outside, which may or may not be something ext. It could be just regular old div. And give it a VBox layout. Then inside of it, I want a panel, a pivot grid, and a Cartesian. That's the X type for a, a graph with, row, with a X and Y axis. Um, in the panel, we have a select field, so we have kind of double looping here, a double nesting here. Okay, the first panel has a margin, a title, and a shadow, and then ultimately some of these will have their properties be variables down here in the class. Okay, so we run this code. The select field is filled in because we fill in the options property. The options property is basically the set of values that are in the dropdown. When we click on that options property, we get the change event. Here's the change event. On select field select will be called. On select field select is down here somewhere. If you see it, tell me. I was trying to organize this by component, but I think I put that as an event. 
So on select field, select, let me find it. There it is. So the on select field select is uh, starting to do some things. And you'll notice right here that, uh, well, let me back up a little bit. The, before the select is called, all of these components are instantiated and optionally you can call their ready event. So for the pivot grid, we call the ready event. And for the Cartesian, we call the ready event. Why do we want to call the ready event? Because we may want to call methods on those EXT components. So the two ready events will store the values of the Angular components as properties of this class. And then when something happens like this select field or this on select field select event we may want to affect either the pivot grid or the Cartesian and that's what's happening right here um, you know, let me get the cart the this event right here so you'll notice the first thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm extracting the ext object and you might say mark you said it was called X I did I actually had, I actually originally was calling it the EXTJS object that seemed a little wordy. So it's also, it's also called that. So if you like that better, say so. If you like that better, say so, right? One or the other, maybe we'll keep both of them, I don't know. So what this is doing is it's getting a handle to the pivot grid and doing the things you would do to a pivot grid to set its left axis, top axis, and aggregate. So it's doing the things that you're used to doing with a pivot grid component, right? We also have, in this case, an event that captures the pivot done event. That is a documented method in the uh, ext.js documentation. That says the pivot is done pivoting and its data is ready. So when the pivot is done pivoting and its data is ready, in this particular case, I want to draw the chart. So that's where I would go find the pivot grid, pivot none method. And in that method, which is down here, I'm going to get a handle to the chart, which is this dot the Cartesian, because I stored the Cartesian dot X, and start building out the chart dynamically. So that's the essence of, I mean, this is probably using most of the things that are available. The layout system, being able to get at methods, being able to, you know, use any and all configs you want, all the events. So I think that's a pretty good example of what you'd be able to do. You also could create non-visual components. What would be a good example of a non-visual component? A store, a model, yeah, something that's not a component, right? So let's just say you did not want to hard or uh, put the store in line like I was doing in the grid, but instead you want to create a store like you would in the store folder and in, in in a regular XJS application, and then you want to refer to it. Okay. Well, in that case, you want to create an X class. So remember, Xs are convention for ext.js. So I want to import X class. I want to create a class that extends X class. In the constructor, maybe whoever's trying to create this class is, is, is sending in some create configs, so I want to deal with that. But what I want to do is I want to set what the class name is going to be called, what the extend is going to be, and then any configs I need. So in this case, this is how you would define a sales store. Okay? And then in code, what you can do is you can just say, let's say, what do we call the sales store? You can say new sales store and basically get a new instance. If you want the actual store, it's .x. So new sales store, parentheses, dot 
x would give you the sales store. So in an example, let me show you an example here maybe that uses that. If I go over here, um, let's find, let's say this one hopefully does. Yeah, here it is. All right. So, so what is this? I've, I've switched to a different example. Um, a more robust example that uh, is somewhat uh, topical. And uh, you'll see what I mean in a moment here. So let me find the, I've got a lot of, uh, where's my bridge one? This one, okay. So I have this application that uses the Angular 2 CLI that I want to serve up. So in the bottom here, I'm just typing ng serve. What ng serve will do, as long as nothing else is running with ng dad is. Okay, so I got to find where the other one is running. I think it's this one. Nope. Let me find uh, this one. Yep. All right. Let me go ahead and run this one and show you uh, the example that I want to show you the code for. So this is building uh, the example at port uh, 4200. And uh, as soon as it's finished, it will sit and wait. It'll actually pop up a, a browser window at port 4200 for me, which is nice. Well, oh, one's already there. And so here's our little topical app. This is, <laughs> no comments out there. This is, uh, this is something we use for the uh, app camp. Uh, this is uh, data from a website called uh, it-dashboard.gov. This is all of the IT spending for every federal agency in 2016. And every number is in billions of dollars, I will tell you. So this has got all the agencies in a data view. This has got some spending detail of each agency. This here is using the pivot grid, so I could quickly see spending by agency. And yes, these are billions of dollars. It's kind of sickening. Um, but one of these are, I think this one, this spending detail right here is a grid with a few extra ca capabilities. We've got the slider on the bottom, um, whole set of uh, columns. And it uses a store that I created using the technique that I just told you about. So let's take a, let's take a look at how, you, how I did that. So if I come over here, to spending detail, where is that at? Spending detail, all right. You'll notice that, no, I don't want to, okay. I'm gonna use a different one. I'm gonna use the agencies one. So the agencies one is this one right here. It's just a data view of all the agencies so that, that uh, they draw it with the, with the icons. So the agencies view, uses a store that has been created at its own class. So you can see it says store is new agency store dot extjs object or dot x. That store itself is over here in the stores folder. And it's created by importing the x class creating a class that extends X class. And basically the config in this define config is what you would expect, right? In this case, it's got a proxy that's an Ajax proxy to a JSON file, but it could just as well be a regular Ajax call, okay? So that uh, covers using a class itself. One thing that I think people will challenge about this model is, okay, sounds great, looks great, but um, aren't I gonna have really big files with the XJS components? Because, you know, I know XAll is pretty big, and you know, how's that all gonna work, right? So I did a couple of experiments here. Um, I ran the Angular 2 CLI against the, this is going to be hard to show you, but I'll do my best here. I ran the Angular 2 CLI against just the um, 
what it, what, what it comes with, okay? And you'll notice that the payloads have a styles.bundle and a main.bundle. And in this case, they're at 10 KB and 2.6 meg. This was uncompressed. This was not a build. I then did that same thing by doing a production build, and I got much better results, like 1.6, 4.1, right? But then I wondered what would happen when I add the EXT components. Is this going to like balloon out of control? So I took the app that I just showed you and did the same thing. I didn't do the unminimized one, but you can see here that it isn't that bad. Actually, this is doing a Z zip compression on top of a minification. And the styles file has the theme that I'm using. And the scripts file has the end result of you doing a Sentia app build production, the equivalent of that, right? So it's only the files that you're using in the framework and anything else it would need. So in this case, I'm using pretty much every component. So it's, that's not bad for uh, all of the components. I think I may have tried to do one that only had the grid in it, and it probably was another 100, 100K less, but I didn't think that was fair because you're not going to just use one component. So it's, I think it's a reasonable thing to do to be able to use these, and this is just using the standard Angular CLI build for production. I didn't do anything different, but just run it through the build for production. And I put, when you do that, if I show you one of the projects, the, uh, the project comes with this angular cli.json file, and I added the scripts that I needed, that was basically the theme that I built, and uh, this is our, no, I'm sorry, this is the scripts, this is the minified code, the app.js code, and then this is the theme that I needed. So just by putting those two things there, it participated in the minification process and gzipped, and it was pretty decent in terms of the size. So, so I think it's a reasonable thing to consider, um, and you pretty much have all the components that I think you would need if you were going to uh, utilize this. And so I think that's all I have. So as I said, one of the things we're trying to do with this preview is to see if this is something that's helpful if you're in a situation where, for whatever reason, uh, you know, your organization is saying you have to go to Angular 2. You have zero components when you go with Angular 2. Angular, Google does not build components with Angular 2. So you're going to have to go out and get components. And why not go with the components that you've been using, that you know are well tested, that perform well, that you know, we've all been using and take advantage of them in this environment. An Angular developer will feel just as comfortable with these components as anything else they might see out there. So that's kind of the position of these things. If it's something that you're more interested in uh, to get more details on, as I said, best way at this point is to just send me an email and um, we can kind of figure out what the right step is from there. So let me put my email back up here. And we got a few more minutes for questions, so I will take a few. Yes? Well, you're still going to have to have an EXT license for this. Uh, since it's preview, I mean, we haven't figured out all of those uh, details yet. But certainly, if you are a current customer, you're not going to have any additional license. We're not going to charge more for this part of it, if that's what you're asking. But you're still going to need a license for the components. Yeah. Other questions? Or Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the question is how far till something ships. I, and, you know, part of that question is probably going to be how, how uh, interested we feel people are in it. That's why I'm saying your feedback is very important. You know, this can be prioritized high, can be prioritized low, depending on, you know, what customers need. Um, as I said, it, I mean, it's, it's, we didn't have, we didn't change anything in the components. So it's not like we have to retest the components 
They're the components that you already know. It's the front end and we don't have the robust tools yet. So it's not like we can't work with you to utilize this stuff now. It's just that you're not gonna get all those features. So if you are interested, let us know. That will, that will help us prioritize. We had another question. Yeah, go ahead. No reason it wouldn't work with anything that I can think of because it'll work. That's why, the, for example, the fit the parent is kind of there because you may not be a child of an EXT component. So given that, yeah, I don't see anything that, it, you know, there's probably some scenario that we haven't thought of, but there's nothing I can think of. Technologically, I don't see any reason why they couldn't be. You know, I mean, we we took advantage of the fact that you know all of our what the one thing we needed in this particular implementation was every property, every config, and every event with all the parameters. We luckily had just a JSON file laying around from our daily builds, so you would need the equivalent of that. You know, you could extend that question to what about my own components if you wanted to do that and be the. Yeah, it'd be the same thing, you know, so. One other thing I haven't shown you, but I can give you a quick, quick little look at it. It's not really well baked, but I, maybe you'll get the idea. Um, let's see if I have it here. Um, it's not going to make any sense to like explain what it is. Okay, not that one, this one. Okay, so what the heck is that? Okay. The application I've been showing you so far, the whole outside was Angular 2. The menu on the left side, even though it looks like an EXT menu, is an Angular 2 menu. Well, it's just it's actually just HTML. And the headers just did some HTML. What's in the middle here, every single component in there is EXT. And the layout is EXT. So that's really taking this to the nth degree, right? If all of that was all EXT, but it's possible. So I just got wrote a little demo just to prove it to myself. So yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. Well, we yeah we've been experimenting with how to do that. Um, that's probably one of the things that's not as far along as we could make it. Um, but yes, that would. That would make the experience exactly what you want it to be, right? The challenge of that is the way these are all nesting in each other is they're dynamically being added as an items collection. How do I add something that has nothing to do with the XT as an items collection, right? Without messing with things. So, but yes, that would be that would be the ultimate. But what we're really thinking you're going to use this for is the components themselves, and maybe less so the layout. But it happens to work, so. Another minute or two we got, so I can take one or two more if there are any. Yes? How about handling the routing? Add, adding, handling? Routing. The routing? In this particular case, it's all Angular 2 routing. There's no, I mean, Angular has a routing, Angular 2 has a routing system, and just taking advantage of it. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how analogous. I mean, it has two-way data binding that's handled here. It, you know, a, a React has a different way of like rendering that you know, if you went to the other Mark's session, you would have you would have seen. I mean, this does more the things the Angular way. What he the way it's implemented and what he showed you is more the React way. In these all these environments, the key is all of a sudden you know, the rest of the industry is discovering components. So it's so nice that we've had components for a while that this kind of pops in nicely. So. All right, I'll stick around here as long as they let me if you have other questions. Otherwise, as I said, if you're interested in more, email me and we'll figure out what we need to do. All right, thanks. <laughs>